welcome back to another TechMinds video. So if you saw my last video on the HackRF Porter Pack where I showed you how you to load this standard Porter Pack firmware, then you're going to want to watch this video. Here I'm going to show you how you can load the Mayhem firmware onto your Porter Pack, which will then give you some a really amazing amount of cool features. Now the Mayhem firmware is actually a fork of the Havoc firmware, which in turn is a fork of the original Porter Pack firmware. Unfortunately, the Havoc firmware is no longer maintained, so we're now looking at the Mayhem firmware. Now to get the best out of Mayhem firmware, you will need an SD card installed in the Porter Pack, which will be then used to store files needed for Mayhem to run correctly. So I'm using a 16 gigabyte SD card, but you'll need more than two gigabytes. So first off, we're gonna download the firmware from the GitHub page. So head over to this page and I'll leave a link down in the description below and scroll down to where it says releases. We're gonna download two archive files. The first one is going to be the contents for the SD card and the second one will be the firmware itself. Now once downloaded, go ahead and uncompress these files. I use WinRAR on Windows 10 and this will extract the files into separate folders. Now if you haven't done so, go ahead and remove the SD card from your portal pack and plug it into your computer. I'm using a small USB SD card adapter. And once you've plugged it into your computer, you'll need to format the card with FAT32 format. Now once the card has been formatted, select all of the folders from the SD card content archive that you just downloaded, and then copy them to the root folder of the SD card. Once copied, you can now plug the SD card back into your Porter Pack. Now it's time to flash the Mayhem firmware onto the Porter Pack. First, we need to plug the Porter Pack into your computer's USB port, if you have a fresh portal pack with no firmware, then the screen will most likely be blank. But if you have any other firmware, including the original firmware, then we need to select the HackRF mode, which disables the portal pack. The screen will go black, but the LEDs on the HackRF will still be on. So back over to the computer, navigate into the firmware folder that we decompressed earlier, and look for a file called flash underscore portal pack underscore mayhem dot bat. Double click this file and then you'll be prompted with a message asking you to connect your portal pack to the computer. Press any key on your keyboard to start flashing the mayhem firmware to your portal pack. Now this process is very quick, but once complete, you'll be prompted to disconnect your portal pack from your PC and then reconnect it. You can now close the software on the computer as it's no longer needed. Now, if all's gone well, you'll be presented with the Mayhem logo on your Porter Pack. Click the navigation button and you'll see a whole new screen layout with some really cool looking features. So let's go through some of these features and see what we can do with this new firmware. So first off, we'll take a look in the receive subfolder. Within the receive subfolder, we can see a range of preset protocols. Let's take a look at ADSB. Now ADSB is receiving on 1090 megahertz and it's decoding the little packets of data that aircraft transmit as they're flying around. Now this data contains information such as height, speed, location, in latitude and longitude. Now as the portal pack starts to receive these ADSB packets, we can see a list start to build on the screen. Now if you use your navigation control and select an entry which has one of the green icons, this will let us view the aircraft in more detail and see its location in real time on a map. So next on the list is ACARS, which should be decoding messages sent from aircraft to ground, but it appears that either I've set something incorrectly or this feature is not fully working yet. It should be displaying messages instead of just the block text. The next feature is AIS for boats, which is basically similar to ADSB for planes, but AIS is for boats. Unfortunately, I don't live anywhere near the sea or any rivers where there's active boats, so I wasn't able to receive any AIS signals, but I'm sure it'll work for you if you do. Also included in the receive folder are three decoders dedicated to AFSK, BTLE and NRF. Now, I won't show these in this video, but I will make future videos show an example of how these decoders work because there's a little bit more to them. Now the next feature we'll look at will be to receive audio. Now this is a typical radio receiver that will output the received audio to the headphone jack on the portal pack. You can tune through the whole supported frequency range and you can choose between AM, FM, wide FM, lower sideband and upper sideband. Here's an example of receiving wide FM where we also can see the waterfall on the portal pack display. Those officers' actions have added to the family's unimaginable distress. 
Another cool feature is the reception for analog TV. Now over here in the UK, analog TV doesn't exist anymore. So I think I'll probably have to do a future video where I can emulate an analog TV transmission to show that working. ERT meters, which transmit between 900 and 920 megahertz can be decoded here too. TPMS decoding is also available here too, which is the tire pressure sensors from cars. Now next on the list is POXAG decoding. In other words, pages. So making sure that I'm on the right page of frequency, the port pack will quite happily sit there and decode these port sag messages as they're received in real time. The next feature that we can briefly look at is radio sonde decoding. Now this is used for decoding weather balloons as they are in flight. Now if you're lucky enough to decode a weather balloon using this method, you'll also be able to see it on a map, exactly where it is, plus a whole load of other data. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, I wasn't able to track any balloons. Now that we've gone through some of the receiver decoders, let's take a look at some of the transmit features. So first off, we can see in the top left, ADSB, and this is a feature that I will not show you in this video. I would also highly recommend that you do not use this feature because apart from it being extremely illegal, unless you're some kind of engineer working in this type of field, it's also very dangerous and could potentially cause loss of life if used irresponsibly. So the first transmitter feature we're going to look at is APRS. Now APRS is a packet data burst that is used on the ham radio bands. The settings for the packet data seem to be quite limited within this application, but it does work and it does transmit an APRS packet on the frequency that you choose. So next on the list is the jammer feature. Now here we can enter a start and a stop frequency and also choose the jammer type. The jammer application will transmit the type of your choice between the two frequencies that you have entered. Now this is what it looks like on an SDR receiver when it's transmitting the jammer. Now I did have some noise already that I was receiving those lines going vertically but you can clearly see as soon as I enable the jammer, you can see the jammer's effect on the waterfall. Another cool feature under the transmit folder is the ability to transmit audio from a microphone plugged into the headphone jack. The 3.5 millimeter jack on the front of the portal pack actually doubles up as a headphone jack and a microphone connection all in one, similar to those found on a modern mobile phone. Now the audio transmitter currently only supports FM, but you can alter the bandwidth, set the frequency and enable a Roger bleep if you like, just like a CB radio. Now the microphone I used for this test was extremely sensitive, so it didn't sound too great. But here is me transmitting from the porter pack and using a software defined radio on my computer to receive the transmitted audio. Testing audio from porter pack, porter pack via hack RF one, testing audio one, two, three, four, five. So next on the list is transmitting POXAG, otherwise known as pagers. Now I have seen others demonstrate this feature using a real pager, but unfortunately I do not own a pager. So I'm going to test this using a piece of software called PDW, which is a POXAG decoder for my computer. Within the POXAG settings, we're able to alter some of the settings, including setting a custom message. As you can see here, you can manually type the message in before sending by clicking the set message button this then brings up a keyboard allowing you to enter a message. Here I'm using a stylus as it's easier to enter the text. Now when you press the start button after setting the frequency, the screen will go blank while it's transmitting. Next up on the transmitting features is RDS. Currently, this feature is only able to transmit a dead carrier with RDS enabled. Unfortunately, there is no audio streaming yet, but we may see this feature being added soon. Setting the RDS type and text is fairly easy. And like before, you can enter the text using the pop-up keypad. Once you've set the frequency that you want to transmit on, just hit the start button, tune to that frequency on a radio receiver that can decode the RDS. Here I'm decoding it using SDR Uno, which is displaying the text which I've already set. Now here's a really cool feature, the ability to transmit SSTV. Now if you don't know what SSTV is, well, it's a way of sending a static image from one location to another using radio waves. Now SSTV is a very popular mode on ham radio bands. Well, it used to be. And with this SSTV transmitter, 
you can send an image directly from the Porter Pack. You can choose the image from your SD card and you can even change the SSTV mode. Scotty 2 seems to be a popular mode, so I'll just leave this set. The only drawback is that FM seems to be the only supported modulation. It would be nice to be able to transmit SSTV on SSB. You can, however, set the frequency of your choosing. So here I'll start the transmission and then I'll use an SDR receiver to receive on my computer and then an application called MMSSTV to decode this transmission. Okay, so I'll speed this up as the transmission normally takes around two minutes. And as mentioned earlier, it's a shame that SSB is not currently supported as SSTV transmissions on the handbands use SSB. Now SSB is normally used because the signal normally travels further, which would assist the receiving station to achieve a more accurate decode. So if we jump out of the transmit menu, we can see we have two buttons, one titled capture and one titled replay. The capture features allows you to record a portion of the spectrum defined by the bandwidth and frequency that you set and save that to a file. The replay feature lets you load that file and retransmit that recording back to RF. Now this is essentially the system used to perform what is called a replay attack. Now there are some things which I've not covered in this video and that's purely down to keeping this video to a reasonable length without making you guys fall asleep. So if there are any features that you would like me to make a video on, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. I hope you found this video interesting and if you're looking to buy a Hack RF or the Porter Pack with a nice aluminium case like mine, then I'll leave a link in the description to a website called Banggood which stock these items and ship worldwide. They have warehouses around the world so you may get it quicker than you think. Until the next video, stay safe, take care, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.